So now that we have a mechanism for dealing with integer and floating point and short and etc. input, which is simply the CN uh, command, what do we do about characters and strings? We really have to treat them, uh, my suggestion is treat them the same way. Uh, there are two ways we can see that we do this. Uh, here in the text, if you flip over to 123, uh, we can kind of see the combined effort here uh, of what they're talking about on the previous two pages. Um, the, the text, I think, uh, pushes for this idea. Uh, you can see it on page 123, uh, and it's line number 13 of their code sample, uh, is the cn.ignore. Uh, every programming language during runtime has what's known as the buffer. Uh, what the buffer does is uh, it holds those uh, inputs that you are making. So whether or not that is going to be voice, whether or not that is going to be uh, keyboard and mouse, most simply, uh, what it does is it kind of holds those just in case uh, the program is otherwise elsewhere doing something else. It's not going to lose your inputs. Uh, we can see this uh, like RVC uh, in the computer lab all the time. Uh, when you start typing your uh, username or password before the system is ready for you, you see nothing uh, until the system is ready and all of a sudden brrrp, it you know puts all of your uh, your data that you have been typing into there. Um, so that's the buffer. It's that holding cell uh, that the, the, the runtime environment creates so that it doesn't lose your input accidentally. Uh, we like to think that you know a program runs smoothly uh, kind of all at one time holistically, but really at the end of the day, uh, each method is called in order, uh, and if uh, your program is off doing something else at the time when a user is making inputs, those would simply be lost. If we didn't have the buffer, uh, we wouldn't really have the ability to create that illusion of smoothness that we expect uh, from a uh, computer program. So you can see there on line 13 again that we have the cn.ignore uh, after line 12, the CN to get that number. Uh, what that does uh, is it essentially clears out the buffer for us and it allows us to continue on getting new inputs. Uh, the problem with relying on the CN dog ignore is that you have to actually encode rely on CN dot ignore. Uh, that is dangerous. It's really relying on you remembering to clean up after yourself. Uh, and if I can use my living room as any kind of an example, nobody remembers to go back through and clean up after themselves. Uh, what is a far better idea is what we can see there uh, on line number 15, which is ch, that's the name of the character they're getting, uh, equals, uh, so what we're going to do is assign to that variable uh, the value we get uh, from that cn.get, uh, and then the parentheses there. Uh, what that does uh, is it makes a call out to a function that is included uh, there in line number three, IO stream, um, and that inputs, or that rather uh, saves the value of your input to uh, here uh, in this particular code sample to um, CH. Now I've included a code sample for you uh, following uh, the link here. Really the big difference between the uh, code sample that you see here on page 123 in the text and the one I have provided for you here uh, is that our code sample uh, in cpp.sh uh, is actually going to use string data as opposed to characters. Uh, again, uh, a string is really just a collection of characters all put together in one data type. So we can have numbers and letters, we can have special characters, um, we can have you know actually a good many of them uh, there so that you can uh, you know garner things like username uh, address and phone number things like that um, is a phone number a string I would argue it could be um, is it certainly true that if we make a phone number something like a floating point uh, or something like an integer uh, they will take up less storage space this much is true uh, but are you really doing any math on a phone number, there's nothing of value you can multiply 8675309 by uh, to actually do some work with it. Uh, so oftentimes it's, you know, it's just easier uh, to use a string because that way if my user inputs 867.5309 or 867-5309, uh, 
uh, I don't have to worry about going through and removing those, or I can simply go through and remove those characters uh, and not have to worry about doing any other kinds of validation on that data. It turns out to work pretty well that way. So on the code sample I have for you there, uh, you'll, notice, you'll notice rather two strings, username one and username two. Uh, the first way, uh, so that's lines number 11 through 14, um, is the, 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 the way that was suggested first there in the text. Uh, I would use a CN, C-I-N, uh, to garner the user to put in, uh, you know, a username. Uh, and then I have to remember to use line number 14, cn.ignore. Uh, without that, the buffer is going to be held open. And when I go in to type user 2's name, I am not going to be pleased with the result that we get there. Um, I suggest uh, that it is far, far simpler. Uh, the second uh, iteration you see there, lines number 18 through 20, you'll notice it's even shorter, uh, is um, just use username2 equals cn.get and then the, the parens, because uh, that's actually calling out to a method that's available in string uh, and io stream lines number 2 and 3 all the way at the very header of your file there. Um, you'll notice it does exactly the same thing. There's no difference in the output. Uh, it is simply one line of text, or code rather, shorter, but it is safer. Uh, you have to remember to do less. Technically, it's much more concise. You do not have to have two discrete lines of code that do the exact same thing. Uh, and really, at the end of the day, uh, it would be my suggestion to go with that secondary route. Uh, less dangerous, less prone to error is always the right way to go.